Snoop? Snoop. How did that come about? Uh, well, he was on my show a few times, and uh, he made good brownies, and he... Um, <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute. Introduced me to... You made to, brownies with Snoop? Oh, I did. Yeah, green ones. But, um, <laughs> but uh, so he... And he was very pleasant and an intelligent uh, man. I thought... I, I had no idea how old Snoop was until I started the show with him. Uh, somebody's brilliant idea in Hollywood that Snoop and Martha would get, you know, an interesting audience on VH1, which we have. We've just been renewed, I think, for our third season. But um, um, he's, he was like 45 years old when I started the show with him. I, I thought he was like 60 because he's like, he's like an old soul, you know? Very <laughs> and he's very funny. And he, he um, traveled. Did you hit it off from the first time? Oh, you yeah. Had we, him? We always, uh, I hit it off with all the rappers. I, don't, I like rap. <laughs> and, um, and, I, and I also like to, um, I like to know about a lot of things. I'm a curious yeah, person. So uh, I have learned a tremendous amount about Compton growing up out there. And we've driven through Compton. We, <laughs> I made him take me to, you know, to where he was born. And, uh, and, and you get to learn a lot. It's a culture merge, really, the whole show. I feel like that's what you are about, though. You're very curious. And I feel like whether you're cooking, gardening, whatever, yeah, You're very really? curious. I want to. I want to know a lot, and I never stop reading. I never stop uh, investigating. I never stop asking questions, and uh, and trying new things. And this is a new thing. Here's a, a pretty impressive number. Your brand reaches about a hundred million consumers across all media and merchandising platforms each month. More than four million Twitter followers. One point seven million on Instagram. There's the Martha blog. There's so much out there. When you started out, go back to the 1970s in Westport and your catering company. Oh, yeah. Did, did you have any idea that, that you wanted to build a brand? No, you, you, I think uh, every entrepreneur in the room would know that you don't know what, what it's really going to turn out to be when you start it. Uh, unless it's a family-owned business that's already has a has a momentum. Right. So you don't know when you start uh, what it's going to actually be. And I had no idea that um, Martha would become the this, you know synonymous with a with a brand, and uh, and living a brand is uh, it, it, my brand is me and I'm the brand. So it's a it's kind of a um, you know it's, it's just now it's a simple thing. I just I just assume that. Uh, everybody knows me by my name, and it's true. I walk down the street from the back, and the back of my head doesn't matter. Hey, Martha, you know, <laughs> and uh, driving through any neighborhood, I will be recognized. And, and what's odd? And what's wild too is I feel like you transcend ages. Do you think about that when you're making decisions about partnerships? Uh, no, I don't. I I really think that uh, we do, um, and our fastest growing audience right now is men, uh, which is very good. Um, we um, any we men try. In this <laughs> and the men in this room, Martha Books. You know who I am. Right? Come on, you know I am. <laughs> they're just—they just won't admit it. Uh, no, no, but but really, um, because of uh, yeah. because of uh, two men households, they need to know how to cook. They need to know how to housekeep. Uh, so a lot of our a lot of our information that we uh, I've written ninety books on the subject of of lifestyle and living. This so, is your ninetieth, right? Yeah, a this book is on yeah, flowers. the new one. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's so impressive. it's uh, what we're what we really concentrate on is lifestyle and everything involved in lifestyle, and we uh, we always say that media leads, and we started off of course writing books first, then the magazine, then television and radio, then product. So media leads and merchandising follows. That's interesting. We, we build up, you build right. up, a, uh, you build up an interest, you build up a, a curiosity in, the, in your readership and, uh, and a desire for things. And then the merchandising follows. You thought about that oh, as I you did. developed your brand? I did, yes. Was there a turning point where all of a sudden you, all of a sudden you realized, OK, or a tipping point? I think that was the, um, the first really lucrative contract that I signed, which was with Kmart Corporation, mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. Kmart was if you don't remember this, it's such a, an interesting fact. Uh, when I first signed with Kmart, Kmart was the largest retailer in the United States. Right. It was uh, about three times the size of Walmart and <laughs> and uh, ten times the size of Target. Target was a tiny little it's blip. Amazing, right? And then look what happened. You know, this is this is America. This is uh, this is business. Uh, keep up with change. Keep up with inventory controls. Keep up with computerization of business, and and uh, and don't uh, look what happens. How do you do that? Because I think in preparing for the summit this year, I talked to some of the CEOs on the advisory board, and they said, you know, how do you pick through 
the information, there's so much overload. How do you pick through and say, okay, this is important for what I'm doing, I gotta ignore this other stuff? Well, we were the first magazine. When I started the magazine, um, after, uh, I, wrote, I started writing books in 1982, um, and then in 1990 published the first issue of Martha Stewart Living. Uh, in a time when magazines were um, having, were struggling, actually, it was not the best year for magazines. But Time took a, Time uh, Inc. took a um, took a chance on Martha Stewart Living. There was no magazine like it, a lifestyle magazine attached to a person, um, and um, and I. I thought, well, this was um, this was a very good way to start to synergize. To, um, maybe maybe you could do TV at the same time that you could do magazine. Uh, synergy at that time, synergization was not a was a dirty word. They didn't like that idea that because Time wanted to keep everything segmented at the time. Then they bought AOL, and then things changed at the company. Uh, by that time, I had already bought my magazine back and was out of there. Um, and now guess, <laughs> now, guess what? Now I'm back with Time again because I've licensed my magazine to Meredith, and Meredith just bought Time, and there is no Time anymore. So uh, it's a crazy world. Lesson: be, be nice to everybody because you never know. You never know. <laughs> Keep your friends. Um, talk to me about when you went public in 1999. What was that like? I was looking at some some video of when you did it. You're on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. You're serving, I think, muffins and cupcakes and. Yeah, all this great stuff. Well, the trader, like? you know, all the floor traders loved that. They loved getting their their muffins um, <laughs> that day. Uh, it was a very exciting day because um, I wish I had been a little bit more prepared. Um, I did not go to Harvard Business School. Um, I did. I knew a lot about business. I had really. You uh, worked on Wall Street. I, I had worked on Wall Street. Yeah. I knew a lot about starting businesses and and being uh, entrepreneurial. But I really didn't. Um, I, I didn't pay as much attention as I probably should have. I was talked out of taking a, or being able to divest myself of a, a lot of money at that time. Uh, the first day of trading, our company was valued at over $2 billion, and I was worth over, way over a billion dollars that first day. Uh, that was very, a very um, euphoric feeling. I bet. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and it was fun. I remember driving up Madison Avenue. This is, a story, this is a true story. Driving up Madison Avenue, saying to my driver, oh, gosh, you know, I could actually stop and buy anything. <laughs> And I didn't. I should have. Would shoulda, woulda, coulda. You know, none of those stories. Well, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Would you, looking back, would you have gone public again? Was it that? Um, would you, yes, would you, I, I would have because yeah. uh, we ran a very, very excellent company. Uh, we had um, no debt. We had um, we had very good growth. But we were in a time. It was just that time when when retail had not yet entered its big struggles. Yeah. Um, I knew Jeff Bezos the day he started Amazon. And, um, and one of my investors was Kleiner Perkins. And so I got to know Jeff, and I got to know uh, the Google boys, and I got to know, I, I, you know, I was investing with Kleiner and doing all that, doing all that stuff, M really meeting Bill Gates, visiting, visiting with all those uh, interesting young men who were just about to change the world. And, uh, and they did it. They did it, and it was an amazing thing. But uh, so I would have um, I would have absolutely done it again. Right. I was a little early in certain things. I was too early with my beautiful online catalog, uh, Martha by Mail. Um, and it was uh, both online and, and uh, physical postage uh, catalog. And I could have, and, but we were just a little too early and didn't have the resources that an Amazon had to keep going and going and going. You know, Amazon didn't make any money until two or three years ago at the most, right. at the earliest. And that, um, and it they just- They still don't make a ton. They spend a lot. Um, well, they have- a, They make they a lot have, of revenues. They do, I mean, they do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're doing just fine. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and dear Jeff is doing just beautifully. Um, <laughs> Uh, you, you, it's a funny picture on Bill. I just looked. Uh, I just got a, a like a little bleep on my uh, on my uh, Instagram. Uh, Bill Gates and and Warren Buffett sitting together drinking cherry cokes, and I guess they're just contemplating that they're no longer the richest men in the world. <laughs> that, that little upstart, you know, Jeff. Anyway, it was kind of it's kind of fun, and I got to know all those guys, and yeah. and I also dated a, a software engineer for 15 years. I learned a lot about software and and about <laughs> technology, and uh, he he ran a he had a Is boat. software code for something. Uh, no, no software. Oh, okay, I'm just playing with you. I'm only on fun. <laughs> Real software, and I you know, and I I always prided myself in finding all the glitches in the software programs in right. Word and Excel. Those were his programs. 
And, um, and, and he hated me for that. He hated that I found mistakes. And, but, but it was kind of a game to, to, uh, to learn all the new technology. When Pinterest came, I was just so excited with Pinterest. Right. And then when Instagram came, it's, you know, that's, the, that's the most profitable part probably of uh, Facebook's business now is Instagram. They, they, they love that. They love right. Instagram. And it's, um, so it's kind, of, it's kind of interesting what goes on. But I, I make a point of learning about it. Uh, I fly my own drones, and I fly, and I take my own pictures, I pictures and I, yeah. yeah, and I do all, all kinds of stuff that that I don't really have time to do everything that I'd like to do, but I try to learn. I don't like Snapchat. I don't want to look like a silly little rabbit with a pink nose, <laughs> and I don't have to, <laughs> I don't have so, to dress myself so up. So I'm thinking about the CEOs in this room. Um, many of them want to be where you are. In terms of a very established. No, you don't. I promise you, you do not. <laughs> well, why do you, you say that? No, I'm just kidding. Okay. But it's, um, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. I just think um, I think that uh, anybody with an entrepreneurial bent um, has uh, has a, a real uh, fine and exciting chance to do something new and different. Um, and yeah. it's uh, and it takes a tremendous amount of hard work. It takes a, a, a tremendous amount of perseverance to to uh, go take your idea to the first level, the next level, the final level, if there ever is one. You don't ever want to meet the final level. You want to keep going because it's a, it's an exciting process. Right. And um, and I'm I'm trying all new things even now. I'm still trying. I'm still trying to make the make uh, sense of retail because we have a lot of product lines and a lot of interesting products to sell. And um, and recently, I, I joined the team down uh, uh, in part time, of course, at QVC. Uh, and John Malone just bought QVC right, and put right. it together with with uh, HSN in a, in a in an important way. And they're trying to figure out exact. And I know if if I'm if I'm working with that little group, um, and they're trying to figure out how to make it really a powerhouse way of selling, it might be interesting to know how. So I'm working, I'm working on that right now and, and doing product lines that I hadn't done before. Fashion, this little top I made, you can buy this for <laughs> like $30 and it's so great. It's really nice, but you when can you, wash it. You said to me walking out. <laughs> It doesn't, it doesn't fall apart. And what's the price? Uh, like about $30. <laughs> Isn't that great? But when we were talking about, you said when you think about retail, you do have to think about QVC, well, Amazon, and... You, and yeah, you, you think about television selling. That is that is basically QVC, HSN now. And that's worldwide. And they're reaching a huge audience of about over 200 million shoppers on that, on that network. That is an amazing thing. And then there's, of course, Amazon, which is uh, which is universally uh, a fantastic way to, to uh, buy. Uh, sell and and also buy things, and then there is of course the the Chinese version of uh, the the Alibabas right. um, and a couple other uh, big companies. Google just bought JD and uh, dot com, and they're trying to also you know get into the into that market. And then there is the the bricks and mortar uh, retail. So there's um, there and each one has its struggles and its challenges right. and. Uh, and and it's just incredible working with them. I'm I'm trying. I'm I'm working closely with people there. So I want to go back though to I do think there are CEOs in this room who want to be where you are. Don't don't make the joke. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, how do you get there? Is it is it just staying focused? Like what what is the thing that you would say to these well, individuals? Well, focus these is extremely members? important. And when I was unfocused, is when that's when you start to uh, veer in the wrong direction. A little bit of I. I what was I did, the wrong direction? No, for no, you? it wasn't exactly yeah. wrong because it helped the brand. That was building a, a daily television show. I did uh, many thousands of hours of daily television yeah. uh, on CBS, on NBC, on uh, um, and on the Hallmark Channel. Lots of many, many thousands of hours of television. That took me away from the day in and day out of the of the company. Not completely, but and I try to you know be to uh, know what's going on in every aspect. But it, it took away the, the the laser focus that I had had before that. Uh, a, a television show like that takes a lot of time. It does. So um, so now I do um, I do a uh, t two shows weekly on pe uh, public television. Martha Bakes and Martha's Cooking School both going into their tenth and eleventh seasons. Because you still do it because yeah, oh, it's important to the brand. Very important. Yes, right. and and it gives you a credibility. And we're doing things in like the Middle East. I just did a program on the foods of the Arabian Gulf. 
uh, at the behest of Dubai, and, um, the, and it is very popular in the Middle East. And they've already asked me to do Saudi Arabia and, and desert food now. Right. Uh, that's interesting because I, I learned something new. And the audience gets a, a very good, um, very good value for for our, for a small program like ours. And from a business perspective, it's another market. Yes, a big market. You've had so many partnerships. Like I, I actually stopped listing them all, but you mentioned Kmart, Macy's, Lowe's, Sherwin Williams, Costco, Gallo Winery. Um, you're selling on QVC, Martha Stewart Pets, um, Home Depot. Home Depot, yeah. Martha Stewart Cafe, your PBS cooking show. How do you? You're on Chopped. How do you pick and choose? Um, I, well, I do pick and choose, but but someone like a, a Home Depot. Um, I had a, a a problem in 2001 uh, with um, someone called Comey. Do you know James Comey? Um, I had a little <laughs> problem with him, and. Um, and that um, <laughs> I, I said we weren't going to get political. No, not it's not political. It's just a problem, and um, and it was um, and that uh, that created a problem with with Kmart. Uh, Eddie Lampert, while while I was uh, visiting uh, West Virginia, Eddie Lampert took over Kmart. I was so thrilled that Eddie Lampert. You know, he was being extolled at the time as the, I hope he's not in the room, um, uh, extolled as the next uh, Warren Buffett. If you remember the headlines, the next Warren Buffett. Well, um, Eddie didn't like that, that I was not, um, I wasn't present. But when he came to see me and uh, we talked about Kmart, um, he just, he just didn't, he didn't understand the value of my brand at that fantastic store. I loved Kmart because the product I made there designed for them and they, they created for me uh, was some of the best product I've ever made because it was so beautifully done and, so, right. and such value. I still have all the sheets and comforters on my beds in my big mansion up in Maine at Edsel Ford's house. Still I, from Kmart. Huh, still from Kmart and all the towels. They're so, they were so fabulous that they're still fabulous. <laughs> So um, and the garden tools, everything was so good, but he didn't he didn't get it. He didn't get that. Uh, he didn't get about merchandising, and I'm I'm a good merchant. So um, so then um, Home Depot was um, was I remember joining Home Depot, signing a big contract with them, um, and the stock at Home Depot was like thirty three dollars at the time. Right. It's now went over two hundred today. It's a you know I think I I think my brand has helped these retailers. Uh, it certainly helped uh, Kmart, in, in you know, for right. uh, for a time, for a time, and uh, Home Depot. Um, it's it's um, it's sort of like icing on the cake. But then, how do you pick and choose? How do you say, well, well wait a minute, it, this is a you don't just pick and choose. You have yeah. to. It's a it's a huge negotiation with all these people. <laughs> Macy's was another um, interesting thing. They they really needed a home brand, right? And we became their largest home brand in this in the store, and we still are there, um, even. Um, even after we um, we had a problem with them with with J C Penney, uh, I mean it's it's a it's a complicated world, and a, an interesting world the, re, the the world of retail. I think what's remarkable too about you is your longevity, and Do you we know, have to mention that. Well, <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I, no, I don't mean, but I mean. You I'm old. But she meant she meant I'm <laughs> she old. She looks amazing. And I and I but I'm very healthy. But you know what? Yes. I'm very active. I go to work every single day, uh, including Saturdays and Sundays. And um, uh, and I uh, and I enjoy what I do. And I think that that's really what it, what it is. Oh, I I love what I do. And you can tell. Yes. I mean, the '90s. I feel like everything you touch turned to gold. Um, going public in 1999. The new millennium started. I need to ask you a little bit. Started off okay. And in the early 2000s, not so great. Well, it, w it didn't hurt my business. That well, was the good. Well, that was the good thing. And I remember. Were you worried that it would? Uh, no, because I knew I knew me, and I knew what had happened, and I knew that uh, it couldn't really hurt the business. What it did hurt were some of the relationships, uh, like my president. I had a fantastic president. Uh, working in the company, and she uh, was listen she listened to the wrong people, right. and the wrong lawyers, and uh, she tried to take sort of take over the company, and I was still the brand, the face of the brand, and that that was a sad moment for me because it didn't work. Right, uh, it did not work for her to do that, and she had to leave. So um, so it was uh, that, and and I think she was the best business partner I've had. 
Uh, and choosing your business partners is uh, one, one aspect, I think, of being an entrepreneur. The best, the best thing you can do is choose the best people, the people that you can stay with a long time. Right, right. And, and uh, encourage them to be part of the company. Um, I, I often advise young, young entrepreneurs to do that. Uh, my publicist had a sister in her business. And, um, and she, was, she, she wanted to be the CEO and the president. She wanted to do the whole thing herself. And I said, but you know, you have this sister who's really smart and she's really good and she speaks French and you don't. And you can, get, you can do all the wine in the world if you just let her be and make her an officer. She did it and now the company is three times as big as it was. So, so it makes a, a big so now, difference if you find somebody that, that's like that in your company to, to expand your, your leadership. I don't want to dwell on it, cause, but you've been, I know you and I talked a few years ago and we did go there, because I do think people think about in this world, crises happen and, and maybe these CEOs have already dealt with it or they will deal, deal with it, where they have a crisis at their company, which is what you went through yes. and you were you know, removed from running your company. Um, I can't even imagine how that was and considering the financial crisis since, and all those things that happened, and many people who did not go to jail, yeah. that in perspective, no, it was, it's, it, it's mind blowing. It was a terrible time, um, but um, but as I said, the brand did not suffer. The magazine. Were you surprised that it didn't? No, no, because were people telling you, "Forget it, Martha"? Oh this no, is it. no. Some lawyers, some lawyers did. Some the ones who were taking all the millions of dollars in fees, but um, <laughs> and uh, pro prolonging the, the agony. But um, uh, but I, I even even um, Mr. Greenberg from AIG asked me about the lawyer. Yeah. Um, and uh, because he was he was having his problems, and we, and he's been exonerated from all of that yeah. stuff. And and but he doesn't get his money back, and he doesn't get you know the the powerful uh, AIG back. You do lose momentum. Uh, well, you can you can yeah. lose momentum. Uh, we didn't when I came out, when I came back to the company. The stock was at a new high. And it was uh, and it was doing extremely well, and we had a new chairman, and uh, I couldn't I couldn't sit on the, my own board for was that I, hard? Can't, I can't remember how long five years I think was that but hard? That, yeah, no, it wasn't hard. It was it was stupid. <laughs> 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 That's what it was. It was totally stupid. So let's move on. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, I'm writing about it. It's uh, one thing you can do after after you build your fantastic companies, uh, write about it. Because, are you writing about it? Oh yes, and um, <laughs> I can't wait to get it all down on paper because it's, um, it's 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 interesting to others. It is interesting. The experiences are very valuable. Well, don't and you feel like when you've gone through something difficult? I certainly feel like from things I've gone through, I'm more sympathetic. I understand. Don't you feel like there's there's some insight, knowledge? Uh, it's, well, sure, you have insight, but uh, and and knowledge, but it's not. Um, I, I I just I just think it's it's in, I just think it's really interesting, and um, and I like reading about things like that. Um, it makes good movies. <laughs> Will there be a made for? Him? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's been a favorite part of your building your brand? Favorite time? Um, well, I think I think um, working on the designs. I love writing books, and uh, as I said, this is the ninetieth book, and we have we have uh, a very very um, uh, loyal book readership. Um, people have them, you know, they they come to us for recipes, they come to us for advice, they come to us for for um, the information that we are so expert in. And I, I like writing. I, I write early in the morning, I can, and I write kind of final copy because I've been thinking about it before I put, before I sit down. I'm now writing on my iPad. It's I don't even use my my desktop anymore, but uh, but it's kind of fun, and um, and a lot of research goes into what we do. This book took this book took at least 15 years to write. And uh, because I've been writing it and writing it uh, over a period of time. And that's what time. you're doing. You're working. Yes, on, on many projects at yeah. the same time. Yeah. Yes. What's a least favorite time for you? My least and favorite building time. Building a brand. Um, dealing with difficult people. And there are a lot of difficult people out there. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> What's your advice? Uh, you to have, dealing with them, because sometimes have, you have to, right? Oh, you have to. You have, you you uh, invite. I mean, I remember having the one partner. Um, they they came to my home for a big breakfast. The whole the whole team came in from um, the west, and um, and it seemed it seemed very cordial, and 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 everybody was all excited. And then when they left, you just realized this is not this is not going to work. 
this is not the right company to be with. This is not the right company to work so hard on. They just don't have the imagination, or they don't have the wherewithal, or they don't have the you know the, it. Uh, yeah the yeah you, know, you just know. That I think that that is and that to me spending a tremendous amount of time developing something and then having it not work out is a big disappointment. But that happens. Um, what do you read? Um, How do you keep up to date on things? Well, I don't read novels very much because life is much better than any novel. Um, I read um, I read the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, um, every single day. A little bit of the Post, but um, I watch um, early morning TV on my treadmill and with my trainer. Um, and it's business. It's MSNBC or, or uh, M, uh, CNBC. Those two. And Bloomberg. Um, yeah, oh, of course, Bloomberg's in the radio. No, that's the radio. <laughs> that's on the drive-in. <laughs> and uh, that's on the radio. And um, and then I. Um, so it's it's and I you know I've just that's that's where I get a lot of information. And I try to stay very current. Um, I, although I don't know who won the soccer today, and I'm a little Does bit upset about that. Surely. Who? Spain. 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 Okay, that's good. And Talk Uruguay? Somebody said Uruguay. Anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> so leadership I want to talk to you, because the focus of Breakaway is kind of this paradox of um, leadership that you don't have to make choices. You can, you know, be global, be local, be high tech, be We have a president like that, don't we? You don't you have to make me. choices. <laughs> That's well, my only joke about the the local. The, uh, did you like working with him? With Trump, on the, you apprentice? Did the apprentice. Oh, I did the Apprentice. Well, he he denies this, but it was absolutely true. He denies it. When a lot. I when I came uh, to work on the Apprentice, um, it was to uh, replace the Donald, and because they they thought he was getting tired or, or whatever, and. Um, and they uh, let me do a whole season. This is Mark Burnett. Yeah. And he said, Martha, at the end, you're going to fire Trump. You're going to say <laughs> you're fired. And I was so excited. It was going to be so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then he decided he wanted to continue. And he was more powerful than I was with Mark Burnett and, the, and NBC. So um, I didn't get to do that. I was, I was so sorry. <laughs> me too. <laughs> do you keep in touch? The, oh, through the newspapers, I guess. I, and I have not. I have not seen seen him since he became president. Do you think at all about? I know he's floated out there the idea of a pardon. Oh, we don't talk about that. Okay, deal. So leadership. What do you think is the right leader to be in this world today? Um, I think a um, sort of apolitical. I think you have to be. It's very hard to. It's very hard to take sides openly, especially in a media business. Yeah. Um, I can't do anything uh, uh, very overt, and I, I feel bad about that, because I, I get I get requests every single day to be overt in my feelings, and I and you can't because 50% of your readership is on this side, and 50% of your readership is on this side. So, and, and I have a magazine and a, an obligation to my employees to to you know pay attention. So, um, so it's very hard to, to, be, um, to be political. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of our, our um, entrepreneurial leaders like the Elon Musks, and the, they, take, they take sides and they get into trouble. Right. And you, and you just can't. If you're running a big corporation, it's better to run your corporation, pay attention to the everyday workings of your, of your company, of your, of, um, of your um, employees, and, and, and focus on that. Do you ever get pressure though from employees? Because it's interesting, you know. They're... Oh, oftentimes. Yeah. Oftentimes. But you say no. No, no. But they know how I feel, but they don't. But I can't tell other people really how I feel personally, and I. And again, that's why you write a book. <laughs> <laughs> Later on. <laughs> so, what advice would Martha Stewart today give the Martha Stewart of when you were starting out? Oh, what advice would I give? Yeah. Um, oh, there's so there's so many so many pieces of advice. I think, One or two. I think um, um, choose your employees wisely. Mm. Um, get the very best like-minded people you can uh, and some that are even smarter than you are. 
Don't be afraid of that. No, don't ever be afraid of that. I think having smart people around you, um, and my business has to be both smart and creative, and uh, and that those are those are the people that you will really, really want to have around you, uh, as you as you grow, as you as you thrive, and it's very important. Um, and uh, and pay do lots of re you have to do a lot of research into people's backgrounds too. Uh, know know what they if there's somebody who comes in that's a little bit older know what they really did and, and can do so it's uh, it's hard it, uh, that's uh, that for me is the hardest part is choosing why choosing wisely enough uh, who's working with me one last question do you wish you were starting over again um, do I wish um, yeah, well in a way yes of course why because then I would be you know 40 years old and I would be <laughs> just on my way again and it would be fun. Absolutely. Is there any, anybody else other than Snoop, interesting person that you'd like to work with still? Um, oh, I have lots of people I want to work with. I lied, it was almost yes. my last question. No. Really? Yeah. Still lots? Oh, there's lots and lots of people I would like to work with. Well, we love working with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you all. Thank you, everybody.